DACA stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. This bill gives opportunities for children and young adults who were brought into the United States illegally by their families or others to stay in the country under specified terms. Under this bill, the Department of Homeland Security is to cancel deportation and grant residency status to illegal aliens who meet specific qualifications. These qualifications include having been continuously physically present in the United States for four years preceding this bill's enactment, being younger than 18 years of age on the initial date of United States entry, not being inadmissible on criminal, security, terrorism, or other charges and grounds, having not participated in persecution, having not been convicted of specified federal or state offenses, and fulfilling specified educational requirements such as having a high school diploma or a GED. This bill has been proposed many times before and under many different names, but the objective is the same, to give young illegal residents of the United States a chance to pursue higher education and work without fear of deportation. Both representatives in the Senate and House have introduced the bill, but the financial and legal ramifications of the bill on both society and higher education have left the floor divided. Although immigration law is nothing new to the United States government, this bill specifically touches the country's youth. Many of the bills listed below are alike in that they set the same qualifications mentioned in the previous slide. However, the purpose of the bills are slightly different. The DREAM Act of 2001, which has also been proposed every year since, stops the removal of qualified aliens who met the outlined qualifications. On June 15, 2012, it was announced that qualified aliens could receive deferred actions for a period of two years in order to pursue an education and to grow the United States economy. However, this made many representatives angry, and in a pursuit to stop the program, they proposed the Department of Homeland Security Appropriations Act of 2015. This stated that the government would not review new or expired applications of aliens that have been denied. Although this bill did not pass, it sent the message to the nation that many were unhappy with this legislature. Yet, every year, that very similar version of DACA, the DREAM Act, had, has been proposed. The Bar Removal of Individuals Who Dream and Grow Our Economy Act, or the Bridge Act, proposed to grant a three-year provisional protected presence to a qualifying alien. Again, those qualifying attributes were outlined in the last slide. In the American Hope Act of 2017, introduced by the Senate, potentially allowed states to provide higher education to aliens regardless of their legal status. And as civil rights topics are raised commonly throughout society, the question, who is guaranteed these rights, resounds more and more. States that live closer to the border have more exposure to the benefits in the downfalls of the bill, but only have a marginal say in what the nation as a whole feels. Although this bill seems like a grand gesture for some, for others it's a nightmare, which is why many times this bill is just filibustered, talked and talked and talked, or outvoted so that nothing can happen. Currently, there are 690,000 undocumented immigrants enrolled in the DACA program. About 79% of these immigrants are coming from Mexico, but the second and third largest populations are coming from El Salvador and Guatemala, as these countries are currently being ravished by poverty or violence. The number of people enrolled in DACA from these countries has definitely increased over the past few years. When DACA was initiated in 2012, Researchers found that the dropout rate of undocumented immigrant students at four-year institutions rose at least 6% due to the DACA program. In 2013, the dropout rate of undocumented students rose from 24% in 2012 to 31%. 
While I initially thought that DACA would increase college enrollment in four-year institutions, the program has actually been incentivizing DACA-eligible students to seek employment rather than a college education. The same thing is happening in two-year institutions as DACA has reduced full-time enrollment of undocumented students by at least 5%. More students are now choosing to enroll part-time rather than full-time. Oftentimes, DACA-eligible youth may be the only members of their family who have legal options to work in the United States, meaning more undocumented students are choosing work over higher education. DACA students are currently not eligible for any federal student aid. However, they may be eligible for financial aid coming directly from a college or university or from the state. At this point in time, only five states offer state financial assistance to undocumented students, while six states, including Arizona, exclude undocumented students from both state financial aid and in-state tuition in general. 20 states currently offer in-state tuition to undocumented students, 16 by state legislative action, and four by state university systems. The laws enacted in the 16 states usually allow in-state tuition benefits only for undocumented students who graduate from a high school in the state, get accepted at a state college or university, and promise to apply for legal status as soon as they're eligible. DACA students who attend universities and colleges in the five states that do not offer in-state tuition typically apply specifically for DACA-related scholarships to help cover as much of their expenses as possible. So just in the past month, um, there has been some heated and politically charged discussions regarding the current president's choice to end the DACA program. His decision has sparked controversy from all sides of the political spectrum, but most importantly, his decision and the threats to the DACA program in general since he's taken office um, have attracted the involvement of university presidents and higher education leaders. In March, nearly 600 colleges and universities signed a letter submitted by the American Council of Education urging our president to continue the DACA program. Issues of racial and social justice have started to become critical issues that college and university presidents have addressed since the election. The potential elimination of the DACA program is definitely a prominent one. Students who are currently in the DACA program have understandably been expressing concern regarding the decisions of the president. These students are worried that they will lose their eligibility to continue as a university or college student as they risk losing their in-state residency status, their financial awards, their employment, and ultimately their security of being safe from deportation. To enter the DACA program, undocumented students must provide extensive information about themselves to the government, including their address, phone numbers, school, and place of employment. Many DACA students are afraid of the risk of deportation as they have mostly been in the, in the United States for the majority of their lives. Many feel like they would have nowhere to go. Federal immigration policies affecting undocumented immigrants have remained stagnant. With that being said, it's not surprising that states are continuing to take measures to allow for better opportunities for DREAMers or undocumented students. The states that currently offer financial assistance and in-state tuition benefits for DACA students will likely continue this trend moving forward, regardless of what the federal government decides for the program, and will maybe even expand benefits or initiate specific programs for out-of-state students. Some states are doing their part to alleviate some of the financial burden through tuition equity policies, but the disparate approaches and legal obstacles in some states mean that college degrees remain out of reach for many undocumented youth. More importantly, some proposed federal, federal legislation to provide legal status to DREAMers requires post-secondary education. Because of the legal challenges and lack of access to financial aid resources, I predict that less DACA-eligible students will apply to the DACA program, or even continue in the program if they are already in it. Um, due to the current political climate in the United States, it's more likely that students will be frightened by the risk of deportation by putting their personal information into the hands of this administration. Even if the DACA program were to continue in the next few years, it will be up to individual states to help undocumented students with financial burdens, such as alleviating the pressures of paying out-of-state tuition and supplying financial aid to help cover costs. If the majority of states are not willing to supply students with these resources, I predict that more DACA eligible students will start choosing employment over higher education. Hi, my name is Julia Taylor and I'm going to be focusing on the challenges aspect of the DACA program. Okay, there are four bullet points that are that really stood out to me that um, have been challenges during the DACA program. 
The first one is lack of funds. So tuition not being affordable and lack of financial aid at institutions. The second one is that some jobs um, not being available and I'll be explaining that more in detail. State laws that vary from state to state and also the political opposition aspect of the DACA program. So tuition not being affordable and a lack of financial aid. So even though um, the DACA program has been put into place so that mainly um, college students um, can be able to attend college before your new university, um, that still hasn't been affordable to them, which makes it impossible for them to go to school full time. Um, it takes away from their studies and, um, and they're just not able to devote most of their time for it because then they have to work. So instead of being able to focus on college full time, they just um, they just either go to school part time or even worse, they just don't attend at all. Um, for some po job positions not be being available, um, kind of the third bulletin kind of plays into it as well because um, some jobs are unavailable from state to state for the DACA program. Um, for example, um, the one that stood out to me the most was nursing. Um, nursing is one of those degrees where you have to do hands-on work and stuff like that. It's a kind of you know clinical job. So basically what happens is that um, there could be a student or there could be a student getting a degree in nursing and then they go to college and then they work. So basically they um, try to work full time and they are able to do that. But in another state, a student that gets a degree in the nursing program and they are not able to get a job in another state because of the state laws. So um, that kind of just really kind of just takes away from the degree that they worked so hard for to get. So basically if they're trying to get a degree and they go to a state and they're not allowed to work um, in the DACA program part aspect of it, yeah, they're just not able to do that. Um, the political opposition, um, as we saw a lot in the news recently, uh, um, Donald Trump has potentially been trying to end the DACA program, if not has succeeded, but um, he basically, um, it was a, like about a month ago, he tried to put a stop to the, um, to the DACA program, which has been really challenging and has been affecting a lot of the students in school and a lot of people at that work full time at a company or um, a local company. Um, for example, I work for Synchrony Financial and um, we have a lot of bilingual um, employees. So a lot of them have been affected by the DACA decision that Donald Trump is trying to put on us in the United States. Um, and actually there's um, a session coming up about that um, speaking to the bilingual employees so that um, they're going to just talk about what everything that's been going on in coming to terms about what's been going on with the DACA program, which has been really tough. So, yeah, so these are the four points that really stood out to me. Again, like I said, um, they have been really strong challenges that really stood out to me that, you're, that I really like that would bring, um, uh, bring out the really big challenges that have been going on in the United States and how much it affects the DACA program, even though, um, even though people are part of the DACA program, the main issue is the law. So. Hi again, my name is Julia Taylor and I will be focusing on the final um, part of the challenges aspect of the DACA program. Um, this slide is more like a example. Um, as you can see on the right hand side, there's a beautiful picture that I put in there um, that says defend DACA. And um, I found an interesting article, um, um, CNN article, um, and it's called DHS will not extend DACA renewal deadline. 
And um, basically, um, from what I read about the article, it's just that if focuses on the fact that the judge um, in the courtroom asked for DHS to extend um, the deadline, and it seems that they would not do it. Um, and as a judge for so many years, he was in shock by hearing that because, you know, he just felt like that the that they were just really heartless by by not extending the program at least until um, other candidates that wanted to be part of the DACA program would be able to put in their applications so that they would not be in danger for deportation. And he wanted to give them a chance to do that, you know, and DHS didn't seem to budge or even want that to be an option. So that was really shocking. It was a really interesting article because it just shows that, you know, that people write about this stuff and that it is a huge issue, you know, that that people are just so quick to try, try to deport people, you know, and I feel like everyone should have a shot, you know, just by my opinion, everyone should have a shot to be able to make themselves in this, in the United States and in their lives out here. And, and they should be able to be given a chance to, you know, better their lives and, you know, make their lives better for them and their families. So I agree with the judge and that DHS should at least give have given a little bit of an extension. I'm sure they could have done that, but they just were so quick to just say no and just and and not give any other candidate a chance to submit their application so they wouldn't be exploited to, um, to deportation. So that was I found that really interesting and and it really stood out to me again, like I said, because I, you know, I feel like DACA is a really great, great program for people who are not born in the United States, and especially for me, I wasn't born in the United States either. I'm Italian. I was born in Italy, but you know, but I just feel like that, you know, students being a part of the and students and and workforce people should be able to be given a chance to, you know to stay and make something of themselves and be given a chance to even become United States citizens. You know, you never know what the situation can be. And it's just the fact that, you know, bottom line, I just feel like everybody should be given a chance, which is why also that picture really stood out to me as well, because we should be able to defend DACA because I feel like everyone's a human being and anyone who decides to come to this country and try to make something themselves and, better their lives should be given a chance no matter where they're from no matter how you know no matter where they were born what color they are anything like that so um again this is just an interesting article and the bullet points from before that i gave about that you know that just shows how much you know how much far we, we still have to go to you know equal opportunity for everyone in the united states so thank you very much, and um, I hope you liked my part challenges aspect part of the DACA program in the United States. And again, my name is Julia Taylor. Thank you very much.